Welcome to Ritual Skill Modeling. This is part 9 of the Meng 9A52 2 Smirch Russian Long Range Rocket Launcher. In part 8, I has assembled the cab unit and now I'm assembling the um, launch control cab. So I'm going to start with painting the um, parts on the sprue, well, most of them anyway, on the sprue. And um, again, this is just for ease, um, like I've been saying throughout the build. And it also saves time as well, just to put down the first coat. The base colour for this is Revel Aquacolor 362 Greyish Green. Again, that's the um, colour for the, the main uh, unit. I'm using XF25 Light C Grey, and that's for the inside of the cab. And I'm also using 08 Matte Black for the underside of the cab. Um, I painted that in, in the uh, light green colour by mistake, so I'm just going over it in black now. The inside cab has got three lights on the ceiling, and these are painted in X23 Clear Blue. I'm painting them on the sprue just for ease again. The outer and inner walls are um, assembled just like the um, uh, main cab, the driver's cab. So it's a two part sandwich together. This is a, a great idea because it allows you to paint uh, both pieces separately and cutting down on drying time. You may have to clamp up a little bit on, on this just to make sure they don't slip as you put them on. But there is a four location points for you to anchor the piece. Next stage is to put in the seats and control panels. There's two seats to go in. Um, they just pop in on the location points. Shouldn't have any issues there. There's some sort of shaft that goes in the bottom here. Um, the shaft was painted in Rebel Aquacola 08 matte black and the head of it was painted in the interior colour. Next to go in are the control boxes. There's a little one at the front, then one main one that goes in the middle. Now, depending on what version you're going to be building, um, is uh, what control box you put in here. But the main colour here is Revel Aquacolor 90 Silver. Uh, you can paint more detail in this if you want for contrast. Um, I, I didn't bother um, because um, I'm having the doors closed so you can't really see much of it. But it's entirely up to you, obviously, if you wish to do that. Next stage is making up the side panels, the, the doors. And uh, like the um, the back wall and the front, this um, is two pieces sandwiched together. It's always a good idea to touch up your paint here uh, before you put on anything else. Remembering the clear windows got to go in, so it's a good idea to get that painted and cured before you go on to that. On, on the f the front wall here, um, it was time to put in the um, the instrument panels and boxes that I made up in the previous video. Then it's the little levers and latches that they go in. These are quite tricky. You'll need, you'll need a city hand to do this. The back wall has um, a few little parts to go on to. Um, you shouldn't have any problem here. The recess points for these are quite easy enough. This little square panel I'm putting on here though, that's a different colour and that's painted in Revel Aquacolor 05 white. It's just a square little panel that goes on at the end. There's a, a plus that bracket and cage thing that goes underneath um, the main part here. Again it fits right under uh, button hard against the recess point to, to get to fit. You don't want to try and push it up too far or you, you'll find it you'll have difficulty fitting it. And once it was all on it was painted in XF28 light sea grey the cockpit well the interior colour. Moving on to the ceiling now and um, there's only a couple of parts uh, to build up here, not many. Predominantly the um, overhead um, instrument panel and the lights. Some of the parts can be quite small though. And these are the lights that I painted earlier in the clear blue. There is four of them I believe that go on. Two different kinds, of this, um, in pairs, there's a, a smaller pair and a larger pair. but. You can't get them mixed up because the recess holes are uh, such that you can only fit them in um, a certain way. And once it was all in it was just a case of touching up some paint. 
Now it's all dry, it's time to assemble them, so the um, front wall goes in first. Just make sure you line it up properly. At this point, I notice I forgot to put a decal in, so I'm just placing that on now. It's just a little black and white um, uh, decal that goes in. There's only actually one decal in the entire um, interior. I didn't have to worry too much about drying time for the decal because um, I wouldn't be touching it that uh, part of the um, side wall. So it was just a, a case of marrying it up to the front wall and cementing it in. And the same for the opposite end. Because um, the parts are sandwiched together, um, it's not one solid part. This actually helps um, setting them into position. It's quite a thick edge. So um, it, it's a lot easier than trying to line up a thin bit of plastic. Then onto the front, well the back, sorry. And it's um, much the same as the two side walls. But this time you, at least you've got two, two ends and a bottom to line it all up. And then it's onto the ceiling. Um, make sure when you're putting it on that um, the instrument panels are not encroaching on anything. Uh, I, I found that it's better to lay it one way than into another instead of just plopping it straight down. But I would also say as well that put this on before the other uh, parts set because you may have to slightly manoeuvre it to get it into position. I did have to put the roof under a heavy clap for it to um, start and uh, stay into position. Next is prepping the uh, exterior furniture and um, first is two fire extinguishers. So this is XF7 flat red by Tamiya for the main colour. Then going on to Revo Aquacola 90 silver and that's for the um, connecting holes on the fire extinguisher. You can't really see it here because I'm painting it on the screw, sprue. Then it was Rebel Aquacolor 08 matte black and this, this was for the actual nozzle of the fire extinguisher and handle. It needs a careful bit of painting uh, doing these two little fire extinguishers but I think they, they look really well, are really good even when, when they're attached to the main unit. There is a lot of photo etch for this uh, next stage um, so out came the old bending tool. Th this is um, a bracket, a basket type thing that goes on onto the back and the, there's several uh, bending procedures in this so you, you really do want to study the instruction before you dive in it will be helpful but I'll, I'll say the instructions on the 4 edge part are not always clear so have, make sure you have a good look at it before you start um, this is where the bending tool comes in real, really handy it comes into its own really because some of these parts that's just a tiny lip that you have to bend on and um, it's not really possible to do without a tool like this or a vice even if you have a model bench vice but you can see how small the parts are and some of them you may be able to bend with your tweezers but um, more often than not you'll probably need a bending tool to do it each uh, four edge part will join on to another one as well so just be aware of that you will you need your super glue to get these all joined up uh, together make sure again that you get these in the right position i actually got this one wrong i put it in the uh, wrong end but it was a uh, super glued in and there was nothing i was able to do about it in the end so i made a mistake though there's also tiny little grab brackets that you have to make up as well and um, I was able to bend them with my tweezers um, but um, so small I was surprised I was able to get it done tell you the truth. That's the full edge prepped and it's back to the fire extinguisher now and there's um, a little um, decal that goes on the fire extinguisher, the label for this fire extinguisher. So I'm just placing them on now. I should point out though when I took one of them off the sprue the nozzle snapped off so one of them's hasn't got a nozzle. It happens sometimes and there's nothing you can do about it. So now it's time to put um, everything onto the main cab, uh, well the main control unit. Um, the 4 edge parts are quite easy to go on once you've got them all made up. 
uh, the location points and resources uh, where they go do um, help greatly at placing them on. Next to go in with the windows, I, uh, like last time the um, instructions ask you to place the windows in before this stage but I always like to leave it as late as possible to put them in. There's a small foliage part that goes into the middle and between the two windows here and it's um, locates onto a, a little recess but try and put that above the recess because in, in the gap there's a, a, a hose that goes in there. So then it was time to go onto the back of, of the um, control unit and this part's getting placed and I think it might be part of the exhaust system I'm not 100% sure but put that part in first before you um, start building the next part. The next part has got a couple of side brackets and um, I don't know best to place a, a, a sort of T piece that you have to make up um, so put one side wall in first and then on the other bracket you, you want to make up um, the um, T piece on it so it slips in into well butts in onto the next one when it's done. Now it's time to put on the fire extinguishers. Uh, one goes on each um, uh, end here. Uh, the there's a, a couple of little location points that just um, anchors the piece onto it. So the first one I put on was the one that with the nozzle broke. The second one has got the fuel nozzle on it. So once that was done, it was time to paint um, the the parts that are already put on. And then, after that, it was time to put in the last foliage part. Now, this is the part I got wrong. Um, the edge of the part should be like a, a black, a solid bit of a wall, but I put that on the wrong way. So, um, the it butts up against the exhaust instead of the other way around. So, what's going in now is the... Um, hose, uh, this pipe is going in. Now, I put this in but I later on I did take it out because um, it was interfering trying to locate the uh, cab into position. There are small box that you have to make up um, on this, which I did actually forget about, hence why I'm doing it now. And this sits in the area where you made the, the brackets in with the little teepees, and this sits on top of that. This is why um, you've got to get this fairly fair straight when you when you're doing it for this piece to sit in. Then it was onto the doors and they just slot in. Um, you can have these open or close. I decided to have mine close, like the rest of the uh, well, like the two doors are on the actual driving cab. Front of the um, truck, there, there's a little instrument panel you have to paint. And the first colour is X28 clear red. Then that moves on to X23 clear blue. And then the last colour will be X25 clear green or white armia. Now these are just three little dots on a tiny little piece that um, goes onto the front. Next to be prepped, uh, there's a, a little square bracket that's going to be sitting in front of the controller cab. Um, I'm painting this now, but that won't go on until the next uh, part of the build. I took off the driver's cab aerial and um, repainted that, and I painted it in Tamiya's XF56 metallic grey. Now, it was lucky that I decided to repaint it because I actually had put on the wrong part without uh, realising it. So, um, the, the part that I took off was actually uh, a hose or a pipe that goes on the um, launch control t uh, cab at the front. It's time to install the control cab now. There's uh, two location points at the back just um, in front of the exhaust pipes and um, one long bar at the front. Now this is quite a tricky uh, one to put on. I had to squeeze in the ends a little bit just to get it in between the two platforms as you can see there and then once it was in I put it under heavy clamp to keep it on. If you look to where my tweezers and snips are, you'll see that the uh, pipe has been taken off, as I said earlier. I had to do that or I wasn't able to fit the cab. Now, when I looked um, 
ahead or on the build and so in the picture and you really can't see this part anyway so it doesn't matter that it's not there so as you say I'm finding it quite difficult to actually get it in in situ um, hence why you put it under every clamp so I'll bring this uh, part to an end um, while I'm trying to get this on here um, if it's a good build it took a bit longer than expected these uh, cab units but it's coming along quite well if you get time, why don't you um, check out my other videos or um, indeed the um, other videos for this build as well as the videos in the channel. Throw me a like if you enjoyed what you've seen. Um, su subscribe to the channel if you like. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.